Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Leora. If you're new here, <laughs> hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Leora. If you're new here, so today let's talk about loans, baby. Let's talk about you and me. <laughs> Clearly, we're gonna be talking about the elephant in the room, loans. So I think this was a long time coming. The biggest part about going to dental school is dental school debt. I think that the way most people pay for dental school is through loans. So we will talk about private loans versus federal loans and kind of discuss the pros and cons of each. So as a main resource for today's video, I'm going to be using an article from nerdwallet.com and I will link it in the description box below if you just want to go ahead and read it. So I think that the most popular loan that dental students will use are federal loans. And this is because if you fill out a FAFSA, they're going to give you federal loan options. The two types of loans that you will be offered as a dental student are federal subsidized loans and federal grad plus loan. Now I will put them both here and here are the current interest rates for last year versus this year. And as you can see, the interest rates have dropped drastically due to the whole COVID-19 situation. Now this is good for us because we love the low interest rate. And currently, as I'm filming this video, all interest rates for student loans are on hold. So we are not accruing any interest, which is amazing. Now federal loans are really great if someone doesn't really have a good credit score or doesn't have a credit score at all. It happens if you were someone who didn't have to use credit cards or you didn't have things in your name growing up, you probably don't have a credit score or a good one yet. It kind of takes some time to build up. But like I said before, federal loans will generally have lower interest rates than private loans. That is, unless you have amazing credit score, you can probably find some private loans that will give you a good interest rate for however much you're taking out. So something important to note is that with the federal subsidized loans, you can only take out a certain amount. Be, um, the subsidized loans will generally have a lower interest rate than the grad plus loans. Federal direct subsidized loans limit the amount you can borrow to $20,500 annually. And if you <laughs> think about this, that's probably definitely not going to cover your dental school experience and that's where grad plus loans step in. So then you can take out the rest of your tuition and your cost of living with grad plus loans, but they do have the higher interest rate. So this is why it is key to try and take out as little loans as you can, but your first year it's kind of hard to tell, so you may have to take out the full amount and that's okay. But whatever you don't end up using, you can usually uh, return that money back to your school. They, I think they give you about a month or so to return any money you don't think you'll be using. Another thing I should mention is with the Grad Plus loan, anyone can take out this loan, um, but sometimes you may need someone to co-sign with you. So I'm personally not in that situation, so I don't know how that works, like what they require for someone to have a co-signer. Uh, I have decent credit, so I'm not sure if that plays a factor into it, but I don't have to have anyone co-sign with me. So next I will talk about some loan distributors that this website recommends if you want to do private loans. I'm going to put screenshots up as I say these so you can see the interest rates that you might have along with these loans. There's the Empower Private Student Loan and the Prodigy Private Student Loan. Now, according to this website, you don't have to have good credit to sign up for these, so that's something to consider if you're looking for a private loan. I wouldn't suggest taking out private loans unless you absolutely have to or if you think you can get a lower interest rate. If you have good credit, you can probably get good interest rate. It's worth checking out. Here are some other loan distributors to check out. College Avenue Graduate Student Loan, Common Bond Private Student Loan, RISLA Private Student Loan, SoFi Private Student Loan, Wells Fargo Private Student Loan, and Sally Mae Private Student Loan. Now, if you're like me and you had to take loans out for your graduate program or your undergraduate program, those will still be accruing interest while you're in dental school, but you will not have to make any payments until after you graduate. Usually, I think there's a six month grace period. Now, paying off loans is a whole nother video 
and I will definitely make one for that. But for now, those are the options. Okay, now that we've gone over the different types of loans that you can take out and some options for private loans, I figured I'd give you some tips to help save you some money while you're in dental school. Tip number one, get a roommate or roommates, <laughs> plural. This is definitely gonna save you money if you're gonna look for a studio or a one bedroom, that's generally gonna be more expensive than if you get a two or three bedroom. It's just gonna be less per person and it will save you a good amount of money. Tip number two, talk to your roommate or roommates and figure out where you want to live. I recommend always trying to find a cheaper area that is safe, but also somewhere that is not too far of a commute, but not too close because then it's generally more expensive. I'm definitely lucky in that my roommate, aka my husband, <laughs> is able to be here with me and we can live a little bit closer to school, so that's nice. But generally speaking, if you're a little bit further from school, it's going to be a little bit cheaper. And my final tip is probably one that people will not like, and that is buy groceries and cook your food. <laughs> I try to limit going out as often as possible. We like to have a lot of our dinners here at home and honestly I prefer home cooked meals. If you have a roommate or roommates, you can get creative and maybe take turns making dinner for each other, have leftovers, share food, or maybe you don't wanna do that, but just cook food for yourself and you can have meal preps, like the possibilities are endless. So I hope that you found all this information useful and if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're new, subscribe down below. <laughs> I will see you in the next one. Bye.